Welcome back as we continue covering Chicago Latino Gangs, History and Evolution. The Ashland Vikings were founded in 1963 by Puncher, who was still alive last I checked. They formed in the Noble Square area when Puerto Rican immigration was growing in that neighborhood. This group actually started off as a football team and were not so much into gangbang as just hanging out. In fact, the Vikings name did not even exist yet. As these group of kids who played football from 63 to 65 became more solidified, they decided they needed a name, and so they chose Ashland Vikings. They had their own clubhouse and were well known for having guns and holding their area down around Wells High School. There are Ashland Vikings still around today, but they have mostly aged out. The Bishop's gang history goes back to the early 1970s in the Pilsen area, and I've mentioned them on several videos. Some of the original members were Little Mike, Bobby Bull, Bobby Bear, and Blackie, all who became cl very close to Latin Counts and were even said to have grown out of the Latin Counts. Thus, you would often see the bishops and counts hanging out together and even putting their name up on walls together. The goal of the group was to gain complete control of 18th Street for Latino youth who wanted to defend themselves against Satan disciples and Gaylords. The bishops also hung out with Latin brothers, as well as Latin lovers and the scene boys. Like I said, usually bishops and counts got along, but in January 1996, the bishops and counts got into it at a party. The bishops would not calm down after an altercation and kept things going by calling Latin counts out their name. Latin counts then started shooting, but did not hit the bishop. Then they started shooting at the Latin counts, but instead of the intended target, they killed one of their girlfriends. Later that night, a Latin count named Rhino gunned down a bishop named Chuco to avenge the death of the count's girlfriend. This started a vicious war between the Latin counts and the bishops that goes on to this very day. At one time, the bishops expanded to many neighborhoods in Chicago, but eventually they closed down shop in the back of the yards, Gage Park, Bridgeport, and Berwyn areas. The bishops even lost 18th Street and 19th Street in Pilsen. And so while they claim a very small area, their membership has gone down a lot over the years and mostly aged out. The insane and known's history is still mysterious today, as they have always intended to be. There are a couple of stories of how they started. But basically, they are thought to have either started in the late 60s in the Bucktown neighborhood or in the early 70s near Levitt and Schiller, which was the same area where the Latin Kings started. And with a lot of these things, there's often partial truth in different stories. What probably happened was they started in the late 1968 or 69, but a few people knew who they were in the Bucktown area. By the early 70s, when the cat was out of the bag, they probably became more well-known in Levitt and Schiller as they are said to often have done hits for the Latin Kings, which were a very visible group. In the same year that the Latin Kings started, some Puerto Rican youth in the Bucktown area formed a gang called the Unknown Souls, and Popeye was said to be either the leader or the co-founder of that group. This Unknown Souls group probably morphed into the Unknowns by the latter part of the 1960s, and it was at that time they adapted the colors black. As I mentioned in the Latin Kings video, in 1971, some of the heavy hitters from Levitt and Schiller, Latin Kings, including King Papo, moved out of that area. And when that happened, some of the Pee Wee Latin Kings, who had been kicked out of the organization for violating King rules, started their own group called the Undercover Kings. Regardless, that name didn't last long, as TJ of the Unknowns came to Levitt and Schiller and took over that group as just the Unknowns. It was called TJ because... He used to drink a lot of T.J. Swan wine. It was at this time they also became part of the Insane family and were part of the War of Insanity when they fought the Spanish Cobras, as I mentioned in the Cobras video. This occurred when King Cobra, who was leader of the Spanish Cobras, demanded that the unknowns drop the insane part of their name. It is said that King Cobra actually confronted T.J. and ordered him to stop the usage of that name, Insane. But, obviously, T.J. refused, and it was on. One of the earliest and craziest members of the Insane Unknowns was Tank Morales. No relation to me. It was well known that Tank shot and killed a lot of people. In fact, he was such a problem in the war with the Cobras from 1979 to 81 that Chicago Mayor Jane Byrne paid for a one-way ticket for Tank to fly to Puerto Rico and never come back. Tank would stay there and actually pass away in Puerto Rico. 
And after King Cobra was killed by one of the unknowns, it is said that the Cobras burned down Tank's old home. Like I said, as the unknowns were very close to Latin Kings and probably doing a lot of hired hits for them, they ended up joining the People's Nation. But in 1992, Latin Kings and Unsane Unknowns broke out into a war over drug territory. Allegedly, this started when some of the kings encroached on an unknown's turf. Over time, the insane unknowns held on to their territory, but just like a lot of gangs, gentrification and old age have decreased the strength of the group today in Chicago. The party people were a newer organization in the Pilsen area compared to some of the gangs that started back in the 1950s. The party people formed in the 1970s, and like the name says, they were young teens who liked to party. By 1980, they had evolved from just partying into a gang. At that time, 18th Street in particular became a war zone with Latin Counts, Ambrose, Morgan Deuces, St. Disciples, Bishops, Racine Boys, and Laughlin Lovers, all fighting for control. Of course, this spilled over into 17th and 19th Streets. Party people are said to have formally turned into a gang at 17th and Carpenter. And as these individuals grew older... A group of younger Mexican kids formed a gang called La Raza. So basically, the party people were older and La Raza were younger, and they formed a coalition, mostly in opposition to Ambrose and Latin Counts. Party people still hold some territory there in Pilsen. I will not be able to get into the whole story of the Puerto Rican stones and the Puerto Rican future stones, but basically the Puerto Rican stones were older, and the Puerto Rican future stones were started in 1992, by a younger member named Brolio. These feature stones and Puerto Rican stones basically combined forces with Familia stones, which pretty much ended the feature stone name. And they were known from that point on as Puerto Rican Familia stones in 1992. In 1993, this group went to war with the Latin Kings, and this continued until Brolio stopped the war. But in 1993, the Puerto Rican Familia stones found out the conservative vice lords were supposed to be a fellow People Nation gang, were infringing on their drug turf, which caused a war between the CVLs and the Familia Stones. In 1994, the Stones also found out the Imperial Insane Vice Lords were poaching on their turf, so the Familia Stones declared war on them as well. The Latin Kings also wanted a piece of the pie, but the Familia Stones were not having it, and this resulted in another war. By 1996, Brulio was killed, but had put his mark on the city of Chicago in several areas, and even into the suburbs. The Imperial Gangsters were founded by Spanky in 1964 in the West Humboldt Park neighborhood at the intersection of Grand Avenue and Central Park Avenue. The formation of the Imperial Gangsters put them in direct conflict with Latin Kings from Division Spalding, located just a few blocks away. The Latin Kings considered themselves the rulers of the West Humboldt area, and so they were not happy with, with these new kids on the block. By 1969, they had spread into the Logan Square neighborhood as Puerto Rican migration increased there. By 1969, a junior member of the Imperial Gangsters, Carlos Little Mexico Quintanilla, who was only 12 years old at the time, opened up a section at Drake and Palmer, now referred to as the motherland for the IGs. It was at this point that the Imperial Gangsters became well-known and joined forces with the older Spanky, and they decided to adopt black and pink as their colors with a rounded crown to separate themselves from the Latin kings, which at that time had adopted the more pointed crown. Spanky was considered the overall leader, or godfather, while Quintanilla only ran the Logan Square section. By 1972, the Imperial Gangsters in Logan Square, under Carlos Little Mexico Quintanilla, were able to establish a relationship with the theater owner, and the IGs offered protection from rival gangs, who often pressured business dealers to work for them. The IGs acted as ushers in the movie theater, as well as security, with the understanding that they would get free seats, and sometimes there were as many as 50 Imperial gangsters in the area. This is also a pretty crafty recruiting tool, as just like today, teens often like to go see the movies. These Imperial gangsters, having watched The Godfather, started dressing a lot like Italian gangsters, wearing long trench coats, white scarves around their necks, and hats, just like Al Capone wore. As it became more known and a threat to other gangs, Little Mexico wanted his members to have guns, so it was ordered that every member carry at least a small pistol. By that point, Imperial Gangsters had grown to over 200 members in the West Humboldt Park faction and the Logan Square faction. 
The IG's biggest enemies were the Latin Kings, Gaylords, and Simon City Royals. In 1973, Little Mexico was still young and made the wise decision to leave the gang lifestyle and go to college. After Little Mexico left, Ronald Mad Dog Carrasquillo took over, and he ran the IGs until he was imprisoned in 1975 for shooting a police officer after they responded when the IGs had a fight with the Gaylords. Carrasquillo stated that he shot the cop in the heat of the fight and didn't even realize that it was the police. But nevertheless, this shooting got him prison for life, where he still resides. In 1978, the IGs became part of the United Latino Organization, but that eventually broke up after the Cobras fight with the Latin Eagles, as described earlier. In 1980, it is said that a maniac Latin disciple named Victor Gomez and Mad Dog Carrasquillo drew up a constitution to govern all the Latin folks behind walls. This consisted of all four of the ULO organizations, IGs, Spanish Cobras, Maniac Latin Disciples, and Latin Eagles, as well as others. This alliance would become known as the Spanish Gangster Disciples, or La Tabla, as approved and supported by the very powerful Gangster Disciple leader, King Larry Hoover. This continued, as I described in previous videos, until the Maniac shot up a La Tabla meeting and pretty much ended the Spanish Gangster concept for good. The Imperial Gangsters ended up joining the Almighty family in 1994 when it was first created. So that pretty much ends my overview for Latino gangs. I'm sorry I left so much out. I'll try to come back at a future date and get more into those groups. I'm trying to put together a Chicagoland gang prevention intervention video as I received some criticism from people on this series who it seems believe that I might be promoting violence. Like I said, I don't intend to glorify any of these groups I'm just trying to educate the community and parents on all these gangs. I did get a nice email from a former student of mine who grew up in Chicago, who had a family member who became part of one of the gangs I mentioned. And she said she was very appreciative. So that gives me motivation that I'm doing the right thing here. And a lot of law enforcement have also told me that they felt my videos were a good training tool. And this includes some officers who worked Chicago in the Midwest for many years. But... I don't want to leave it at that. I really would like to have a gang prevention intervention panel. So if you're interested in being on that, please let me know. It's interesting to me sometimes how people will criticize, but they don't want to do anything about it. I'm trying to do something about the gang violence situation in Chicago. I hope that makes sense. I also want to give a shout out to Jinx because we've used several of his pictures in this video. And he has a book out called Compliments of Chicago Hoods, Chicago Street, Gang Art, and Culture. That is available online if you want to check that out. I hope that you learned from this episode and that you come back to view many more. Thanks once again to ChicagoGangHistory.com for your well-done research on these games. Don't forget to purchase your copy of Chicago-based games, Beyond Folks and People, written by myself and Joe Sparks, retired Chicago Police Department gang detective. Our book can be purchased on Amazon.com and other platforms and it can be ordered from any major bookstore. As always, please take care of each other and stay safe. Until next time, this is Gabe Morales signing off. Gangsters, cops, and politicians.